I just got a brand new synthesizer. This synthesizer right here. And so naturally, I need to film some content about it so the big boss doesn't ask what I've been doing all week. Now this is definitely not a sponsored video. I mean, as you can see from the background, I just have a very real problem with buying synthesizers. So I'm going to use Lovable to turn that problem into some sick synthwave music by building an app to help me come up with catchy chord progressions, which is just like a fancy way of saying the sequence of notes in a song. And as I've learned from many frustrating vibe coding sessions, we don't just want to jump in and say, build me an app. That's gonna be disastrous. So let's start with a little bit of a plan. So the goal here is to write a detailed plan for creating an app. Do not write any code yet. We wanna come up with like a really good definition of what this app does before we start building it. So as for the functionality, this app is going to be a chord picker for helping with inspiration for writing songs. And then we've got a little bit of a description about how the user will actually interact with the app. And then for the design, this should have a modern, minimalistic, dark mode UI. So I'm going to copy all of this and paste it into my prompt in Lovable. And so Lovable is doing some thinking here. It says it's spinning up a preview, which hopefully isn't a preview of code because I've told it not to actually write anything, but it's actually done exactly what we've asked. It hasn't started building anything. It's just writing a detailed plan about the overview of the app, the design inspiration. And it's actually gone and done some research about other software that exists in this space like Ableton Live, Logic Pro, and even Spotify's web interface. We've also got a color palette and typography, animations, and then the core features of our application. And again, I've given it very little information about musical theory, but it's gone and researched like what MIDI is, what the different types of scales are, and then different ways to represent the chords within those scales. It's then broken this down into an implementation plan. So these are each of the main components that it's going to need to build, what dependencies we're going to need to pull in, some state management as the user is changing the scale or the chord they wanna play, and then how the user will be able to interact with the application, and then some technical considerations. This all sounds pretty awesome to me. It's also suggesting that if we want to save any of that data, that Superbase might be a great choice. And it is, but not right now. So I'm gonna say, start building the application using this detailed implementation plan. And so now that we've read through that entire plan, we've made sure it aligns with exactly what we wanna build, it might prompt some extra questions that we have or things that we wanna add, maybe functionality we want to remove for this first version. But once we're entirely happy with that plan, we can start building it, which Lovable has already finished doing, and this looks sick. It's asking for permission to access our MIDI devices, so I'm going to allow, and then we haven't nailed the dark mode, but that's easy to fix later. Let's test the functionality is working correctly. So if I drop this down, I get a list of each of the MIDI devices that I currently have plugged in. I'm gonna select the Super 6, which is this synthesizer. We can then select a scale. C major is pretty common, so let's stick with that. And then if we scroll down, we see each of the chords that are in the C major scale. So let's see if they work. <laughs> that is pretty incredible. Lovable has basically been able to one-shot our entire MVP. And that in part is because we took the time to think about that implementation plan rather than just jumping straight into build this kind of app. And we can see this is actually sending this MIDI information to the synthesizer. If I trigger one of these chords and then give this a little twiddle, that is actually that synthesizer. So there are a couple more features I wanna add, but let's fix the dark mode first. You nailed the functionality, but the UI is not dark mode. Don't change anything about the functionality, but please implement dark mode. So again, we're being really clear that we don't wanna change anything else. We don't want any of the functionality to change. We just wanna update the UI and it's done exactly that. So we can test the functionality still works. Let's choose a different scale, let's say C minor. And then if we play one of these chords and slide some faders, we see that functionality is still working and we can play different chords and stop 
all of the notes. Awesome. So functionality, exactly the same UI updated. So next, I wanna add the ability to change octaves. Right now it's just a chord, but I wanna be able to play that chord lower or higher. So we're gonna say, add the ability to change the octave of these chords. And so it's added this octave control. So again, we'll need to select our MIDI device. And then if we play one of these chords and then stop playing these chords, shift down an octave and play them again, we're lower. And if we go up two octaves and play it, we're higher. What happens if we change it while we're, nah, nah, not that cool, but that's okay. Next up, I wanna add the ability to favorite chords. So basically I wanna say, this is a chord I wanna use and this is a chord I wanna use and kind of build up a little bit of a melody for my song. So I'm going to say, add the ability to favorite chords. This should add those chords to a new area called song, the user should be able to drag and drop the chords to change the sequence. While trying to add this new song section, Lovable has run into an error, but thankfully it's really easy to feed that error back in and ask Lovable to try and fix it. And it looks like we're getting a very similar error. So let's try and fix it again. And this time it looks like this has been properly resolved and we've got this new song section. So let's try out some chords. That's pretty nice. So let's favorite our C chord, our D minor, our E and our F and our G. And so this is exactly what I wanted to be able to do is audition these different chords in different sequences to come up with a catchy song. I quite like that. So I'm gonna get rid of this D minor. I'm gonna move G. All right, now drag and drop functionality isn't working, but I guess I could trash these and say I want my F and then my E minor. It's also got this play sequence button, which is very cool. That's basically what I was going to implement next. So that's great, but let's fix that drag and drop functionality. So the UI looks great. Adding and removing chords works perfectly. Don't change that functionality, but the drag and drop does not appear to be working. And let's try and drag and drop. Nah, drag and drop still not working. Drag and drop is still not working. And it's still not working, so let's open up the console and we see an error that looks like it is related to this droppable component. And so let's just copy this big old blob of error and drop it in to our chat with Lovable. So the drag and drop is still not working. The following error is appearing in the console. And then we'll also paste in that error. And after a few revisions, we're still not getting anywhere. So let's say the drag and drop functionality is still not working. Think through three options for how this could be solved. So rather than just saying fix it, we're saying spend a little bit of time thinking about it, present us some solutions, and then let us decide which way we wanna go. So we can see we can either disable strict mode, use a compatible for, or implement additional workarounds. Option two is to replace with a modern drag and drop library. And then option three is to implement our own custom drag and drop functionality. It's recommending option two, which I think is probably the right way to go. So we can say, let's go with option two. So let's choose some chords. And then oh, we can actually drag and drop them. The system works. So now if we play through this sequence, I actually quite like that. So the last little bit of functionality I wanna add is the ability to download this sequence or song as a MIDI file. So let's ask Lovable to add the ability to download a song as a MIDI file. And now let's give this a refresh, choose our device, choose our four chords, which I think was C, E minor, G, and then F. And now let's download that as a MIDI file. So check it out, I can take this MIDI file, I can drop it into something like Logic, and then I can build a whole song around it, which sounds something like this. Which is pretty damn cool. And if you think it's cool, then you should definitely check out this video right here. It's a full hour length video synced perfectly to the Super Bass album, which is guaranteed to make you a better dev and build better quality apps. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.